Yeah, that was. I hope they enjoyed that particular oh, highlight. No, no. Because uh, Paul Ibogun will be talking to us this morning, of course, about the game and the plans for Aimbe because mm. uh, most people were not really happy that how come they did not put up this performance mm. when the group stage started. And another question is, you know, how... Uh, Ufa Muda was on fire yesterday, he scored a brace, yeah. and this guy didn't even start the game against Zamalek and all that. Maybe, just maybe, there would, you know, some, some issues, you know, that's the reason he didn't start. We can answer that question as a question that Polai Bogun should be answering for yes. us this morning. He will be ready to talk to us any moment from now. So when he's ready, I guess they will just let us know. Okay, he's ready. good morning and welcome to the program, Coach. Uh, hi, good morning, hi. Yeah, good to have you here. Now, the game yesterday, I mean, what's your reaction to it? How do you see that game? No, I mean, I think, you know, um, it, 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 was a very, it, it was a very important game for us, you know, having, having not won any of the other games in the, in the group stages. So it, it, I think it was very vital for us as a club, you know, to build up our confidence, even though I thought in throughout the tournament, we actually played quite well in most of the games, but we're unfortunate. But this was a... A very, very important victory for us, for our, for our confidence at the club. Now, the Imba is out now, I mean, not progressing to the group stage, uh, to the, the semi-finals, even mm -hmm. before this game. And some Twitter users were actually asking, how come Umfam Undo didn't start the game against Zemelec, which was really very crucial for Imba? No, I, I think it was, uh, you know, it, um, we, we had a plan in the game, uh, because, you know, it was a game where... Where you know, if you look at that game, even a, even a draw would have put us through. Um, you know, um, we wanted to. It was a basically a tactical move in, in the first half to try and um, uh, and keep the game going because we we, we knew that Zamalek attacked a lot from from the flanks. Um, so the plan was, was to bring Inform in um, early, and I think Inform over the last few games have, have not have not fully been himself up to them, even though he he was coming back. I think it was basically a tactical thing where we, we had hoped to get him, um, to bring him into the game, but we needed to keep the first half of the game because we knew in a way like that, I'm like, we're going to come all out in the first half. So. Okay, uh, Coach, I mean, is there any particular reason why uh, for anybody's underwhelming performance in the group stage, I mean, it's just the one win against the Sundowns uh, yesterday? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the question. Can you please? Sorry, um, is there any particular reason why Aimba performed um, so underwhelmingly uh, in the group stage? Um, because it's just a one win against the Sundowns yesterday. Yeah, no, I, I think you know it's um, uh, you, you know one of the issues was if you look at I I, I said to many people that we did, the, the main issue we had was was in our, our first game against Zam Zamalek, which we which we lost at home. That that's where we went out. You know, with with it, with the uh, the team going down to three to three clubs instead of four, it didn't give us a lot of chance to try and recover, you know. So, that, so I think that, that that was the main issue really. And I, I think as anybody has watched in all the games, the, the team played very very well. We just had an issue of of converting their chances at times. So. What you're saying is um, basically the main issue uh, was tactical. I'm sorry. Just tactical issues that you had in this campaign. Uh, nothing, uh, no welfare issues, nothing, no external uh, circumstances actually affected your performance on the continent. No, no, no. I, I think, well, I, well I, I think everybody knows that, you know, one of, the, one of our issues obviously was we, we, I mean, not playing at home is not, a, is not an advantage for us. And, you know, if you look at the, if you look at the, uh, the group state of the, of the Champions League, home, adva home advantage is very, very important. It's very, very important, you know, and I think also not not playing in Abba has not been great for for the team. Um, okay. I know I I know it's been a situation which has uh, and nobody is really to blame for 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 it, but it's a situation which actually which actually exists. I think you know, aim one of the one one of the clubs in Nigeria that home advantage is very important because you can imagine playing if we had played the game our game at home, we'd be talking about a crowd of maybe you know, twenty to thirty thousand people. Yeah. You know, instead we're talking about a crowd of maybe less, less than five hundred people, and then mm. when you go to play away in 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 other in, for example, when when we went to play in, in in Tunisia in Tunisia or or in in, in Egypt, you're talking of a of a, of a full stadium of um, very hostile fans, you know, which which actually helps the team on. So I think that I think that was one of the issues, really, you know. So. Okay, now, uh, Port Harcourt Stadium, I mean, we, we saw the, the, the pitch yesterday. It's not really looking pretty. Why did the Imba have to choose that stadium? Is there a reason for it? 
No, I mean, obviously, we our stadium in Abba is is not very ready at the moment. Uh, and I know the uh, the government is trying to do all they can to get it ready, but it, but it's, it's not ready at the moment. And um, but I could, at the beginning of the, when we chose the Champions League, I mean, I'm not obviously that was down to to the management to choose it. Uh, the pitch was in much better condition, you know. But obviously, we're in the rainy season, um, and we, and you can't let, legislate for for the rain or the weather, you know. But I, I would like to, to, to at this point also thank the uh, the River State government for for allowing allowing us to play there. It's it's a it, it's a good gesture on their part. Okay, yeah. Before we let you go, um, Coach, I mean, what's next for Eniba now? I mean, are you looking to make a quick return to the Champions League, a top two finish, perhaps? Mm, of, of course. I mean, I I've, I've always said that a team like Eniba, we need to be in the in, in the continent year in year year out. Um, up, up until the qualification this year, I think it was four or five years that that that, that no team had qualified for for the group stage. Now, uh, Aimba has had another taste of it, which they which they, they've had in the past, and I, and I think we are hungry for more 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 more, more success. And I think um, myself in particular, this is a very good experience for me. I'm, it's my first year coaching in the in the Champions League, and um, I know I've, I, I know I, I personally have learned a lot from from from, from it, which will help me. In, in good stead, should I get the opportunity again? Okay, now, uh, talking about the league, Aimba is 10th right now on the table, 28 games played, 45 points. Chances of actually, you know, retaining the title they won last season. Is he, is, is he going to be achievable this season for you? No, I, I think it's very real, real, realistic. I think when people look at the table, and I think a lot of people don't look at how many games we've played and how many games we have in hand. We, we have three games. We have three. We have three games in hand. If we win those games in hand, I, I think we we would automatically go to set the, to second place. You know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's for us to really to really look at every game of the cup final and well and, and do our best to uh, to do that. Okay, we wish you all the best, man. We just can't wait to see you back in the Champions League again, and hopefully next season to be definitely be better than this. Thank you for talking to us this morning, coach. Okay, there's yeah. definitely hope. I love the optimism and everything. So I mean, that's ready. why you're in the game. And that's why he's actually in the game. That's why you're in the game. The audience <laughs> is taller now. I mean, you left the club. You went to a club who just won the league. That they haven't mm. won it for a while. So the thing is, you just have to sustain it. And sustainability, you know, is always very difficult. You yes. don't just sustain. You want to give the, the, the fans, you want to give the players, you want to give the management of the club something bigger than what they achieved last season. Mm. Yeah, Cecilia. So let's see, right let's, see how they, <laughs> um, let's see how they, let's see how anybody from this particular uh, disappointment. I mean, there's no other word uh, for it. Uh, they didn't live up to expectations at all. at all. So, yeah, we'll see. The season is almost over, uh, Cecilia. March day 32 uh, went down over the weekend. Uh, so a few more games to go and we'll be able to see Nigeria's uh, representatives on the continent again. This year it was a write-off again, just yeah. like it's been last year and the year before and the year before and before. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long yeah, time. When are we going to celebrate the team in the Champions League again? Mm. It's mm. going to be difficult, not just mm. getting the group stage or whatever, but at least getting in the final, that alone, yeah. it's something shining that most light, of us can though. actually a, um, shine Shining light. Um, okay, Ufo, which is? Ufo Nudo. Yeah. Nine goals on the continent. On the continent. Yeah. I That's very impressive. Facts. Okay, it's just ended yeah. at a good stage. Just like <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay, from the CAF Champions League, they move over to the UEFA Champions League. Yes. Some games decided last night. We talked about Celtic, they escape a skin of the thief. And of course, FC Porto. I don't know how AS Roma actually imploded. That's the word right now. They collected yes. two yellow, two red cards uh, between the first half, of course, and the one, the second half. And FC Porto had to run away with the victory, 3 0. And the end of the day, the first one was a draw. So if we can just yes. take a look at the results yes. from the UEFA Champions League playoffs from last night. We know today uh, Man City is going to be in action. But yesterday, AS Roma yeah. and FC Porto, so you so know. Yeah. Uh, talked about Celtic earlier. Yeah, I mean, Cecilia, obviously, that, that result uh, you just talked about, Roma and um, Porto, that has to be the, uh, I don't know, shocker in quotes because uh, Roma had the advantage going into, into, the, into the second leg. Uh, but, you know, playing at home in front of their own fans at the, at the Olympic Stadium, I expected them to consolidate, but it didn't happen. Two red cards actually uh, put pay to that, those ambitions, and um, uh, Porto just took full advantage of it. And that's why they in the group stage, 4-1 on aggregate, uh, the Porto won that one. Another result, um, Apo Besheva, they came really close to knocking out um, Celtic. Celtic. I mean, all they needed <laughs> the was just one more goal. And they had the opportunity, they lost the penalty, and um, 
and that's how they bowed out of the competition. Uh, so no group stage for um, John Ogu, Spy goes on midfielder John Ogu in that one. Monaco 1-0 one over Villarreal. Uh, they threw 3-1 on aggregate to the group stage. And we have other results as well to uh, Victoria plays in. Uh, they played a 2-2 draw against Ludo Goretz. But Ludo Goretz progressed 4-2 on aggregate. Yeah, that's the word. There's uh, FC Pro 2. And of course, just remind you know, and if you, if you remember, the, uh, the first leg was actually a draw. Yes. And now the second leg, FC Proto had to go there. I don't know what actually happened to the Romans. I mean, it, they just it, they just lost somehow, their heads. It, they lost their heads. I mean, if you look at the red cards, uh, the uh, the got um, uh, Rossi. I mean, that was a very very uh, reckless challenge, very stupid, very late, and. Um, and that's why uh, when you're playing these kind of games uh, with, uh, with, with a man um, a disadvantage or even a couple of players a disadvantage, it tends to affect you. And that's what uh, Porto did. Porto just capitalized on, 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 um, on the situation and they got the goals. And that's why we'll be seeing uh, Iker Casillas in the Champions League game for, uh, I can't remember the last time I've been seeing this guy. He's been there for a long time now. I think it's going 18 years or thereabout now since Iker Casillas has been playing Champions League. Uh, football. Um, other uh, games uh, for today, uh, we have Manchester City playing Star Bucharest. Uh, that one is as good as done because uh, City lead uh, 5-0 from the first leg. Uh, in other fixtures, uh, Rostov will play uh, Ajax. Uh, we have Salzburg um, will play against uh, Dynamo uh, Zagreb. Other results, um, we have uh, Borussia uh, Munching Gladbach will play against the uh, young, young Boys um, and um, Apuel Nicosia uh, will play uh, Coburn. In that one there. So, yeah, it promises to be very, you know, um, tense. Tense yeah, affair. Tense. Yeah, tense affair. But, but I'm looking forward to actually seeing Joe Hart again because, according to Pep Guardiola, he says he's going to be on the post, uh, on the girl post right now. And we know the story that Claudio Bravo is already in Manchester City, is going to undergo Cecilia. medical. So, that's actually the end of him because he says I mean, if you want to end. leave, you can actually go. Cecilia, that's the end. I mean, the writing has been on the wall for a couple of <laughs> a couple of weeks now. Now, Joe Hart is going to be out of the door. I mean, Claudio Bravo is going to be the number one. Willie Caballero is going to be the number two. And uh, it depends on Joe Hart now if one remains the number three, then it stays. But he wants to keep and playing. Play insignificant games. Or not play at all. Or not even play at all. Because I imagine Caballero will be playing uh, the Capital One Cup and, you know, the FA Cup uh, clashes and all that. So, um, very, very difficult situation for Joe Hart's but uh, there's only one choice for him he's just got to go and keep playing he's still a very decent goalkeeper still young and uh, he has a lot, of, a, a lot of years ahead of him yeah, so definitely. yeah it's time to move on Joe Hart I, I don't know, I know I tell, let me ask you this question is there a particular reason why he doesn't just want him I mean he's come out he's explained he likes his goalkeepers you know to build uh, he likes to build from the back from that's the back, his yes. thing so everything starts with a goalkeeper he doesn't and just Joe like Hart his, cannot fit in yeah, but he says Joe Hart is not good with his feet that's, that's according to um, Pep Guardiola, um, apparently Joe Hart, you know, can't really that's distribute. Rude. Well, that's, that's, that's why he's there, Cecilia, to make those observations. That's why he's being paid all those yeah. millions. He's got to make those judgments. And it feels Joe Hart can't, you know, doesn't really fit into his uh, philosophy style of building uh, from the back. So uh, it's very unfortunate for Joe Hart. And I don't know, I mean, at that age, I don't know if he can actually yeah. learn learn how to do those things, you know, yeah, after that. Uh, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. That's so, why he just had to go to Barcelona, a club already where you have where a keeper. Who that's how they play. And all that. Now, yes. another question is, with Barcelona letting him go. Yes, bravo. I mean, how are they going to cope? No, they'll cope because um, they have... Um, uh, the German there, uh, Tester Of course, Ray, I know that. Mister, and they've agreed uh, to sign Ajax goalkeeper okay. uh, Jasper Silicon. So that's going to come in there, provide competition for uh, Tester And Tester obviously is going to be number, number one. one and yeah. um, uh, Silicon will just be back up. So I don't think it's a problem uh, for Barcelona at all. They'll be just fine. And uh, for, for Manchester City, though, I don't know. Bravo coming to a new league. How's it going to adapt? How's it going to yeah. cope uh, with a lot of long balls and, you know, competing aerially with the likes of uh, Robert's Hoot and uh, Ryan <laughs> Shawcross? I don't know if he's ready for that. I mean, he's not the biggest yeah. goalkeeper. Look at him. Yeah, well, he's looking at him. He's a good well, though, so. Let's see. Maybe Pep yeah. Guardiola has a reason for that. might take him a while. <laughs> it's it might it's not take him a while, while definitely. Yeah. Well, okay. Olawale Ishola is going to be joining us in the next segment of the show to talk about the paper the review. Yeah. Of course, there's so many issues on the papers this morning. We'll be reviewing that. But that will be after this break. Stay with us.